Hello, welcome back to the channel, ladies and gentlemen. So, Moff Gideon was a very interesting element to The Mandalorian Season 1. Sort of popped up at the end. I thought it was really, really good because, of course, like it mirrors fantastically well the original movies as well as the prequels, I guess. You know, you have a figure, a looming threat, but then actually it's also, you know, there's someone bigger behind them, sort of a the puppeteer. Uh, that's what, you know, Moff Gideon was uh, along with Werner Herzog. Uh, again, incredible to have in The Mandalorian. It, it was all really, really good. But of course, um, Moff Gideon showed up at the end and sort of revealed, I, I guess, like a an element to the Empire still there. You know, adjacent to the fall of the Empire, but still there, still sort of going, clinging on to power. Um, and we've had a lot uh, from, uh, what is it, Giancarlo? Is that his name, Giancarlo? Uh, yeah, Giancarlo Esposito. Always that... I struggle to exactly know how to pronounce that, so hopefully I've done that correctly. Um, but we've had a lot of reveals from this chap. He clearly relishes playing Moff Gideon. And one of the biggest reveals was, essentially, there was a tease that he'd have a Star Destroyer. Um, and it's not actually a typical Star Destroyer. Now, I'm going to show you it, because his base of operations has been revealed. And it really opens up some fantastic opportunities for... Just way expanding uh, the lore of the Mandalorian whilst paying homage to things that have come before it, which they're doing so well with anyway. Um, now, obviously, there was lots of rumours that we were going to be getting cloning, right? That's what we all thought because we had the scientist, which had um, the... It was like an emblem uh, of the Kimonans, Kimoans. Uh, and everyone thinks that they're basically going to try and clone... The child. That's what everyone thought on the first season. This actually goes one step further to double down on that. And it's because his ship has been revealed. And here it is. Now, it looks Star Destroyer-esque. But it's not. So, I've got it highlighted here. Uh, it's an Architens class ship. Now, I've also got like the Wikipedia up here as well. We'll, we'll dive into that. But it is, oof, major stuff. Now, this was revealed to us by IO9. Uh, and the the key thing here, it being an Architens ship, or Ar Ar Architens, I don't know how to pronounce that, um, is because they were, they were used by the Jedi, right? That's what they were. They were by the Jedi, their clone period, um, clone wars period. And they were used by the Jedi, but then they were associated predominantly with the clone wars. Uh, and then the Empire obviously later made use of them as it became the Empire from the Clone Wars. So the thing about this is, is that it's another tie to the Clone Wars. It's another thing. You know, is there, is there old tech on board that could be linked to clones, cloning and sort of aging and, you know, all of that stuff? Maybe. Um, but it's another key point to launching it way back to the Clone Wars to really just drive home that element there. Not only did we have that scientist with the emblem, very clear insignia uh, of cloning, uh, but and, and obviously that machine as well, there was all of that uh, business there in the first season. But then we have this. Now, really, really key is the fact that because of his age, you know, he's no spring chicken, Giancarlo looks to be, Moff Gideon looks to be like he's been around a while so he was probably around in the clone wars i would imagine um so his key focus there on it being cloning and having driving that home he clearly likes that technology now as someone who is um i i guess trying to resurrect the empire in some shape or form cloning would drive a uh a hefty, you know, hefty price there. You know, it, that, it's, it's quite a good aim to have if you're trying to resurrect the Empire, isn't it? Uh, it's it's fantastic. I think this is really, really interesting. Really, really interesting. Now, we haven't seen Moff Gideon uh, in Season 2 yet, so we don't quite know what's going to happen with him. Um, but in terms of the Wikipedia, right? So I'll have a look at this, because obviously this is interesting. Um, characteristics, so uh, the enemy ships are faster and more manoeuvrable. I suggest caution, TV-94, referring to the Architens class light cruiser and its companion consular class cruisers. So they're not, you know, they're, they're no slouch. 
there's no slouch. Now, obviously, here um, you can see kind of tr traditionally what they look like. Um, his is, is basically the same. Like, it is pretty identical. I mean, it is, isn't it? It's identical. Uh, but obviously, it's been repurposed. <clears throat> now, in terms of the armament and things like that and what they, generally speaking, have on board... Um, you know, they were built on a broad kite-shaped hull in line with the Kuat drive yards triangular design motif. It was also uh, reflected in its contemporaries, so that's fine. Um, but in terms of, so the Clone Wars, here's the, the really, really important stuff. So we've seen Obi-Wan Kenobi on them. Harkaten's class light cruisers were rushed into service with the Republic Navy upon the outbreak of the Clone Wars in 22 BBY. One of these ships was part of the Jedi General Obi-Wan Kenobi's uh, flotilla during the Battle of Salukami. Uh, and it was used as bait for General Grievous, distracting him with the Jedi boarding party on his own flagship that was attempting to rescue the captured Eeth Koth. Uh, and in the course of the battle, the ship was targeted at point-blank range, blah, blah, blah. Now, several Arkatons class light cruisers formed part of the fleet that protected Kamino. That's the one. So, uh, again... We've got a Kamino scientist. These were used to protect Kamino as well. And you've got Moff Gideon interested in cloning. Can you see, like, this massive, broad... It's great. Like, I really like this stuff. This is fantastic. Um, now, that was obviously attacked by Grievous and Asajj Ventress. Uh, Architens class ships were also part of the fleet that later engaged Ventress's fleet in the Salus system. Following a de de distress call... From the Togruta colonists on the planet Kiros, Jedi Master Yoda deployed a group containing Architens class light cruisers and a Venator class star destroyer to investigate. After the slaves were transferred to a slave processing facility on Kadavo, an Architens class cruiser helmed by Admiral, Admiral Coburn maneuvered underneath the facility to deploy the Wolfpack aid uh, to rescue. Now, the troops brought the freed slaves on board. Uh, and Coborn's ship uh, left as Plo Koon and his squadron destroyed the facility. Now, there is some bits, you know, there's the Age of the Empire here. Um, nothing, I, I think really what's the key element here is the fact that they they have hard association with Kamino. Hard association with Kamino. We've, ha we've already had um, a Kamino scientist... I mean, it just seems pretty obvious to me, to be perfectly honest, um, that this will then go uh, as part of the whole cloning thing. But I think it's fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. Uh, there's only 100 officers, enlisted crew and pilots. You've got passengers, 100. Uh, so they're, not, they're not huge. They're not huge. They don't, they don't have a lot of people. Um, and they're not massive anyway. They have armoured holes and things like that. They've got a, a fairly big... Uh, armament, but they're not huge. 100 officers uh, and 100 passengers. So it's not a lot. It's only 200 people. So you've got to remember, like, he, he's travelling light with all of these people. He's travelling really, really light. Uh, now, IO9, uh, the main source for all of this, you know, again, they're leaning hard on the cloning element, and I would agree. I would agree. Now, they say here that we can't be 100% sure what it is, but since these images are official and approved by Lucasfilm, it leads us to assume that the Mandalorian will feature a big-ass Imperial ship soon. Uh, that fact alone gives this second season much more scope. But whose ship is it? What does it mean? Um, I mean, the hint is that it's Moff Gideon's. You know, we assume that the ship is Moff Gideon's, considering he's the only un-uniformed uh, Imperial officer we've seen on the show. Uh, and he's going to play a bigger role in the next few episodes. The only other thing it could be, maybe a Sogatano, but doubtful. Anyway, um, you know, he's got TIE Fighters. There's TIE Fighters coming out of it. It makes sense. I think it's that. So what do you guys think? Is this good? Is this bad? Let me know down below. I think this is fantastic. I think this is really, really good. And I love The Mandalorian. I've enjoyed it. Uh, and I'm happy to keep watching it and reviewing it here on the channel every single Friday. But let me know your thoughts on this down below. Does it, does it, you know, open anything up for you guys? I personally, the fact that they're referencing the Clone Wars, albeit not, you know, them not being the best, um, I think it's just good. Like it, it clearly shows care and attention, which I've really liked 
uh, about the Mandalorian. So let me know your thoughts down below. If you're new here, do hit subscribe. You can stay up to date on the world of pop culture movie news by hitting the bell notification icon. Also, guys, when you hit the bell notifications, please do switch them on to notify all, because otherwise you won't get notifications because YouTube sucks. But thank you all so much for watching. I'm Mr. H. Take care.